Hey, I'm Hannah Trigwell. I had a chat with Lauren Deakin Davis, who's a self taught and award winning producer and sound engineer. She got started by watching tutorials and asking questions about the skills involved. She learned by trial and error, much like myself. We had a great conversation about forging a career in music without any formal training, and we talked about networking, and we talked about how she landed her job at Gary Barlow's studio. It was just an awesome conversation, and I wish that I'd have seen something like this when I was younger. Just two women chatting about what it's like to get into and work in the music industry and just demystifying it a bit. So here are my highlights from that conversation. I hope you enjoy the video. The viewers or the listeners um, may not know that you work in Gary Barlow's private studio. Yes, I do. That was, with anything, I think, a bit of a weird series of events. Last year, I won the European Pro Sound Award for Breakthrough Studio Engineer. Um, Congratulations. Thank you very much. Um, and I met uh, Fraser T. Smith. He won like Best Producer Ever Award, obviously. He then gave me his number and invited me to his studio. And um, Manon Grangin was there. So I don't know if you wow. know Manon or not, because uh, Manon is uh, Fraser's engineer. Yeah. So um, we just got chatting and stuff. And then um, I was kind of like, oh, I'm, I'm doing a lot of freelance work. If there's any work that you think that you could put me forward for, that would be great. And I didn't necessarily think that I was going to get anything from it because, you know, like, we're all just chances, aren't we? We're just like... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, Master blaggers. Everybody in this industry. I feel like it's great, though, because there's quite a um, an open conversation now between professionals in the music industry where it's like nobody really knows what they're doing. Yeah. But I think that's great. So many people have just started being honest about the fact that they're just, you know, figuring it out the whole time. Um, and I think that's really cool because it's allowed a lot of other kind of new musicians or up and coming people to feel like it is accessible. You pioneer things differently because you, you can't possibly say that you are doing this set path because there isn't a set path and then it just wouldn't work if you did exactly the same thing as someone else. So it's like, yeah, it's actually the key to it is by blagging and doing things differently. <laughs> yeah. So the next stage of that blag was the fact that three weeks later, Manon uh, rang me and was like, oh, I hope you don't mind, but um, I want to put you forward because Gary Barlow is looking for a new assistant that plays guitar, specialise in logic and writes songs. She was like, I just thought you'd be a good person. And I was like, what? Yes, that would be like play it cool, perfect. Play it cool. Who wants to, you're like, who wants people who specialise in logic? Gary Barlow, apparently. I've been in many a conversation about Pro Tools versus Logic and I just think all the softwares have their own thing. And mm. he, uh, logic was the one I've chosen. But yeah, so I did the interview on the Friday and then I got the job on the Monday and then on Tuesday I was like, in the studio with him and Craig Davis. <laughs> like, what? No. I know. I mean, when I when I started uh, recording music, I just had Audacity and two external like Logitech, uh, you know, laptop speakers, and like that was my that was my thing. And then um, I built up a client base, and I, I built up yeah. and reinvested in because I am um, found with my mum. Uh, someone at an open mic and I wanted to have some recording experience that wasn't just recording myself so we recorded her and I recorded five tracks and I recorded them really really badly um, and then I did that for free and then I went to the next person and was like oh I've got this EP do you want to record with me I charge £10 a song um, and she was like yeah okay and then she had an EP and um and then had £50. So then I used that £50 and then I bought a better microphone and then I went to the next person and said, oh, I've done these two EPs. Do you want to record with me? I charged £20 a song. And then I had £100 and bought a better interface and um, just sort of built up from that. The real reason I got into music production was because I was in a girl band called The Folk and then later it became an indie pop band called Delora. And um, we were really lucky. And uh, when we were like 15, 16, we started working with Island Records and so wow. when we were doing that, we were getting thrown into all of these amazing studios. And I was just the one that was like looking over the shoulder of the engineer being like, <laughs> this is the coolest thing ever. Like, what does that do? What does that do? And um, I, I, at that point, that's where I was kind of like, oh, my God, recording is how you can write the best songs in the world because you can do all the layers, you can do all the sounds, you can verse stuff, you can put effects on it and like everything. And, and that's where my like love for it came. What's the difference for you in terms of like experience between working just in your studio and working like for yourself versus working five days a week in Gary Barlow's studio? I think there are pros and cons to both. So as a freelancer, I'm hustling all the time, trying to get work and constantly trying to 
keep people in the loop. With Gary, it's like more stability. I always know that I've got work. I always know I'm going to have a salary. I would say I really enjoyed the freedom of freelancing. And being able to work mm. and say, yes, I want to work with you. No, I don't want to work with you. Or someone being really talented and then being like, I have no money. And be being able to have the power to be like, okay, we'll work something out then. That's like a big difference, I would say, between yeah. the two, is the freedom of the projects. You know Katie Ray? Katie Ray is a songwriter. Yeah, she's incredible. Um, we, right, we've been friends for like since, oh, so, like seven years or something. Um, she gave me her login for her Splice and then I also have my own Splice account and I basically just log into her Splice account go what are the freshest beats <laughs> like what's the, what's the freshest stuff she's downloaded and be like yoink 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 <laughs> and I just steal it from her because like I don't know if she knows that I do that or not um, she's gonna find out <laughs> she's gonna find out she's just smashing it really is that why you're trying to steal all her <laughs> samples <laughs> yeah I'm like what well, you got going there you know? <laughs> do you know Girly? do you know the artist Girly? yeah yeah so me, Gurley, and uh, Katie wrote the song How to Build a Girl for the movie How to Build a Girl, um, ah, which was cool. such, a, such a random thing. We were just like hanging out and then like that's that's what happened. And I guess that's kind of how naturally things in music happen. Friends of friends, it seems to be always the best way for me anyway, networking. I used to have like such a mindset about um, networking, which is that you'd have to go in there and you'd need to set up your pitch and talk to people straight away and then like bam and then and then you realize that you're gonna see them again this isn't the last time you're gonna see them you don't have to queue up to talk to that famous person that happens to be at the event it's like you probably will actually cross paths again have you ever met like a band or an artist at a gig and thought yeah i really i want to work with you i want to record some stuff with you oh all the time all the time uh that's like do you scout people like that yeah yeah that's so um the way I started off was doing a lot of scouting, especially like my advice to people that are trying to get into music production is I went to open mics and just found people who hadn't recorded before. And cause they're not, yeah. they won't have a high standard or a bar. So you can really learn your craft doing that. But it's like, that's something I love when you see a band and you're like, Oh my God, that's so good. And then you get to work with them. Like that's dreams, you know, I don't do covers. I don't feel, I think I can, yeah. I really can enjoy other people doing covers because I, yeah. I think really like that. As the producer in me, I specifically like hearing other versions of songs. You feel like you have to say that because I did covers. <laughs> you don't do covers, what? <laughs> yeah, I feel completely yeah, obligated. <laughs> no, no, but th- that's the truth though. Because like, being a producer, you can yeah. make a song sound anything. And I think when people do covers, that's their version of producing a song. When I was still doing a lot more freelance stuff, I found people would come to me because they would say, that, I love your recording style. I love your production style. I want to have tracks that sound in that vein. And even when, like, when Gary asked me to produce something, he's like, do your thing. What makes something your sound? Guitars. Like... Guitars, yeah, a lot of guitars. Guitars, (laughs) but like not necessarily a lot, just like the right guitars. I I really like building textures around that as my primary instrument. I I didn't listen to a lot of music, so I was just doing what I thought sounded right. And then hearing it, um, like when it gets played on the radio versus the other songs or things like that, it's like my song would come on and you'd like almost know it was produced by me because of the style that it was in. But I got really self-conscious about that because I was like, that means my track can't (laughs) professional because I don't sound like other people's (laughs) songs. And I was just like, oh... (laughs) You are a very humble person. Wow. But thanks. you are you are award winning, are you not? I I'm a couple of award winning, yes. <laughs> so um I won Best Producer of twenty seventeen and twenty eighteen for the NMG Awards. Um and That's was, pretty amazing. Thank you. It's two you know, years on the trot. Yeah, I won it the first year it was around and then I won it the next year again and then I just didn't enter the third year because then I was working for Gary Barlow and I just and then I won the PSN, I won the European Award for Breakthrough Studio Engineer. People don't necessarily think I am the best in the world, but they think I'm good enough. You know? Right. Yeah. Like I think I think yeah, I have because yeah. of because of the awards, because of all the things I did at such a young age and everything, people are like, Oh, she must be like the best thing ever and I'm like, actually, no one really cares. And if you can get what they need from you done, then that's all that matters. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. To see the full interview, it's pretty lengthy. I think it's like 40 minutes long. I'll put a link below and you can head over to Tom and Music's YouTube channel. It's an episode of Backstage Pass podcast. I loved it. Check it out. Link down there. I want to say a really big thanks to everyone who's supporting me on Patreon. New music's coming very soon. And I will see you next time.